Hello everyone, am I live? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Kindly someone give me a thumbs up in the chat box if I'm clearly visible audible to you people. Let me confirm if I'm clearly visible audible. I will start the session in the next few seconds. Let me confirm. Am I live? Give me a minute to confirm it. Yes, I hope it's working. Yes. So let me start. So I welcome you all for today's session. A very, very good morning to all of you. I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev here. And today I'm here to take very important topics, multiple important topics, which are really important for the competitive exams, NEET, PG, FMG and INICT as many MCQs come from this topic. So the first topic, the important topic from systemic pathology I'm taking today is blood vessel pathologies. So in blood vessel pathologies, four topics are really very important. Many questions come from atherosclerosis, aneurysm, aortic dissection and vasculitis, the various type of vasculitis. So it is a marathon session in which it is a long session in which I'm going to cover all these four topics one by one. So are you ready? Shall I start? So I'm starting with the first topic that is, uh, I will start with, uh, uh, before that I will teach you one more thing, hypertensive uh, vasculopathy. So I will start with the hypertensive diseases, then atherosclerosis, aneurysm, aortic dissection and vasculitis. So these five topics we will be taking in sequence. But before that, it's important to understand the basics and the structure of the blood vessels. We know in human body, three types of blood vessels are there. There is artery, there is vein, and there is capillary. The three types of blood vessels which are present in human body are these. Now, the arteries are thick walled, veins are thin walled. Let's see the structure of an artery. In the structure of the artery, three layers are there. The innermost layer is the tunica intima. The middle layer is the tunica media. And the outermost layer is the tunica adventitia. These are the three layers in the wall of the artery. Now, let's see. So, let me draw our artery. In the wall of the artery, this is the lumen. The lumen is lined by the endothelial cells. This is tunica intima. I will show you the detailed structure. This is tunica media. And the outermost structure is the tunica externa. I guess everyone can understand it. Right. Now, here you can see. Just a second. You can see the same structure. Now, let me elaborate the three layers. Okay, you can see this is tunica intima. Let me mark tunica intima. In the tunica intima, two things are there. Everyone knows that endothelial cells are there in tunica intima. But just below the endothelial cells, there is subendothelial tissue. Can you appreciate this tissue? I'm talking about this tissue. So this tissue also constitutes tunica intima. So in tunica intima, two things are there. What two things? Number one, the endothelial cells, the endothelial layer. And just below the endothelium, there is subendothelium. These both together constitute intima. The second layer, subendothelial layer of the intima is important because the complete atherosclerosis will be formed here only. So when I will teach you atherosclerosis, I will tell you this is the location of the atherosclerosis. So atherosclerosis is a disease which occurs in intima, the subendothelial layer of the intima. So it's important to understand this. Now coming on the media, you can see the media. The second layer is the media. Inside media, this is media starting from here ending here. So it is the thickest layer. In the thickest layer, multiple smooth muscle cells are there. All of them are smooth muscle cells. It is lined by two boundaries. The inner boundary is the internal, uh, in, uh, internal elastic lamina and the outer boundary is the external elastic lamina. Between these two boundaries, smooth muscle cells are there. All these cells are smooth muscle cells. That is smooth muscle. Uh, that is the uh, smooth muscles are spindle cell cell, cells which are forming the media. Actually, in atherosclerosis, these cells from the media, they will migrate to the intima, the subendothelial layers of the intima. And here they will proliferate. They will migrate and proliferate. That will constitute the atherosclerosis. And the outermost layer is the externa. You all can appreciate this is externa. It is loose connective tissue. Have you got it? So give, give me a thumbs up if you got it. So have a look on the details. Tunica intima is the innermost coat. We have seen it. There is endothelium and subendothelial tissue. Endothelium is the flattened layer formed by the endothelial cells and subendothelial tissue is the connective tissue just below the endothelium made up of collagen and proteoglycan. And after the tunica media is there, which is made up of smooth muscle cells. All these cells are smooth muscle cells. It is bounded by two boundaries. It is internal elastic lamina and external elastic lamina. We all can appreciate this is internal elastic lamina. This is external elastic lamina, right? And tunica adventitia is the outermost layer having loose connective tissue, right? Now, Tell me the nutrition and the blood supply of the wall of an artery. Let me draw the wall of an artery. In the wall of the artery, this is intima. Let me draw intima. This is endothelial cell. And just below the endothelial cell, this is subendothelial tissue. So this is intima. Let me draw media. 
so this is complete media the thickest layer made up, made up of smooth muscle cells and this is external so can you tell me the blood supply can you tell me the blood supply of the artery the lumen contains blood the lumen contains so we know arteries supply blood to everywhere but who supplies blood to the wall of the artery who supplies blood to the wall of the artery now we divide the artery into two portions the inner one third this is inner one third portion and this is outer two third so inner one third and outer two third inner one third is supplied by direct diffusion from the blood so direct the lumen contains blood so direct diffusion of the blood gives oxygen and nutrient to inner one third so it is the direct supply direct diffusion from the luminal blood but outer one third so it will be far away from the lumen so the outer one outer two third portion cannot be direct so there are arteries there are arteries there are arteries supplying the wall of the blood vessel outer two third and that is known as vasa vessorum vasa vessorum vasa vessorum are the name of the arteries which supply blood to the blood vessel so blood vessel of the blood blood vessel uh, of the blood vessel is known as vasa vessorum and that supplies outer two third have you got me awesome have you got it so that is the blood supply give me a thumbs up if you got it so inner to inner one third is supplied by direct diffusion and outer two third is supplied by vasa vessorum vasa vessorum is the vessel of the vessel can i say that vasa vessorum is the vessel of the vessel everyone give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up shall i proceed ahead so that was about arteries let's talk about veins first let's talk about veins also so let's have a look on the veins veins are similar to the arteries except five differences so let me tell you five differences first between the veins and arteries the veins the wall is relatively thinner but the three layers are there intima media externa all three layers are there but they are well uh, they are not very clearly demarcated in the artery it is very clearly demarcated this is intima this is media this is external but in veins it is not very clearly demarcated the wall is relatively thinner elastic tissue is also scanty and small amount of collagen is present in the external also and in the subendothelial tissue veins have walls veins have walls arteries do not have walls all veins have walls except two veins learn the except learn the exceptions the two exceptions are vena cava and common iliac vein that is the name of the two veins who don't have walls apart from it all other veins in human body they have walls but arteries do not have walls right so maximum blood volume is in veins okay coming on the capillary the third is the capillary last after that i will start the diseases capillary capillary don't have media capillary have intima basically capillary have only intima in the intima there is the endothelial cells based on the basement membrane that's intima and in extern of few parasites are there sometime present sometime absent so basically in capillaries only intima is there no media no externa in capillaries only intima is there now capillaries are of three type please understand it's very important capillaries are of three type ispe bahut questions aate hain continuous capillary palustrated capillary and sinusoidal capillary which are known as sinusoids you may have heard the term sinusoid but have you ever bothered sinusoid hote kya sinusoid are the special type of capillary so what is the speciality in that what is the three type of capillary as i have told you what is the structure of the capillary you tell me what is the structure of the capillary in the capillary we have only intima so what is the diagram let me draw the three capillaries in front of you so this is the first capillary this is the intima this is the intima that is endothelial cells present on the intima and this is the basement membrane let me draw the basement membrane this one is the basement membrane can you see the intima on the basement membrane so there is no gaps in the intima no gaps in the basement membrane both are continuous such a capillary is known as continuous capillary this capillary is known as continuous capillary the second type of capillary the second type of capillary you can see here basement membrane is continuous but there are gaps in the endothelium can you appreciate the gaps in the endothelium this type of capillary in which gaps are present in endothelium we can appreciate the gaps i guess you all can see there is a gap between the adjacent endothelial cells gaps are present but basement membrane is continuous so this type of capillary is known as fenestrated capillary the second type and the third type i guess you all uh, got it what i mean to say in the third type gaps will be present in both the gaps will be present in the basement membrane also and the gaps will be present in the endothelium also so such type of capillary the third type these are known as sinusoids now everyone give me a thumbs up sinusoids i have drawn three diagrams in front of you you can appreciate the differences between the three type of capillaries continuous capillary fenestrated capillary and sinusoidal capillary continuous capillaries are those capillaries in which no gap neither in endothelium 
nor in basement membrane. Fanistated capillaries have gap in the endothelium, but basement membrane is intact. In sinusoids, gaps are present in both in basement membrane as well as in endothelium. So same definition is written in front of you. The three definitions you can appreciate. So you can appreciate continuous capillaries are those capillaries in which endothelial cells are continuous without fenestration and basement membrane is also continuous. Both are continuous, continuous, that's why continuous. Right, fenestrated capillaries are those which have fenestrations between the endothelial cell. By the word fenestration, we mean gaps. Gaps are present in endothelial cell, but basement membrane is intact. It is continuous. It is no, no gaps. So that is fenestrated. But if both endothelial cell as well as basement membrane have fenestrations, such a capillary is known as sinusoidal capillary. So you can see what author has given a beautiful diagram to us explaining the same thing. In the three diagram, you can appreciate this is endothelium. This is endothelium here in the second diagram. And in the third diagram, this is the endothelium. So we have seen the red color is the endothelium in the three diagram. With the blue color, I will mark the basement membrane. This is the basement membrane of the first. This is the basement membrane of the second. And this is the basement membrane of the third. Give me a thumbs up. So you all can appreciate what I mean to say. So in continuous capillary, both are continuous. The basement membrane and the endothelial layer. In fenestrated one, the endothelium is fenestrated, but basement membrane is continuous. In sinusoidal one, both are fenestrated. By fenestrated, I mean gap. Everyone got it? Kishore, Shriya, Brijesh, Awesome. Have you got it? So, okay. So, what is the conclusion? There are three types of blood vessels. Arteries, capillaries, and veins. After that, okay, let me write it completely. The complete tree. So, start with arteries. Arteries give rise to arterioles. Arterioles give rise to capillaries. Capillaries give rise to venules. Venules, venules, and venules give rise to veins. Right, so there are total five blood vessels: arteries, arterioles, which give rise to capillary. It gives rise to venules, and venules leads to vein. So these are the five type of blood vessels present in human. Now I have, and on which location which blood vessel will be present? It depends on the hemodynamic de demand of that particular organ. Right. I have four questions for you. I have four questions for you. You must have five liters of blood. Do you know that? So maximum blood out of the five liters of blood, maximum blood is present in which blood vessel? Right. Maximum blood volume. Maximum blood volume can be present there. Maximum cross-sectional area, which is having maximum cross-sectional area. Okay. Let me draw it once. I will draw it once so that it will fit in your permanent memory. So let me draw an artery. So this is an artery leading to multiple arterioles. So let me draw three, four arterioles. These are arterioles. This lead to capillary. So let me draw the capillary with different color. These are the capillaries. Capillary leads to venules. So here I'm drawing the venules. Can you see? These are the venules I'm drawing. And venules finally lead to vein formation. So this is a vein. You can see the five type of the blood vessels I have drawn for you. Now I'm, draw I'm asking four questions. I'm sorry. These one are arteries. This is arteriole. This one is capillary. This one is venule. And this one is vein. You got it. Now, see the question. I am asking, where is the maximum volume of the blood? Out of the five, maximum volume out of five liters, where it is present? So, Shriya is saying veins. I agree with you, Shriya. So, maximum volume of blood is present in veins. So, let me write, write volume maximum. Maximum volume is present in veins. Do you agree with me? Give me a thumbs up, everyone. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. You got it? So, maximum volume is present in veins. If I take area of all these, so if I measure the area of all arteries present in body, all arterioles present in body, all capillaries, venules and vein, maximum cross-sectional area, area-wise maximum corner. So if you see area-wise maximum will be the capillaries. If you take the area of all capillaries, they are small, but they are multiple. So cross-sectional area, area is maximum of the capillary. So volume is maximum, volume of the blood is maximum in vein. But area-wise, maximum is the capillary. You got my point? That, that is the second important MCQ. The third important MCQ, listen, everyone listen. The blood is flowing in this direction. So blood is first going in the artery, then going in the arteriole, then going, of course, in the capillaries. And from capillaries, it is moving to the venules. And from venules, the blood is collected in the vein. So this is the direction of the flow of the blood. We all can see that. Now, whenever blood go, bro, um, is flowing in any of the blood vessel, any of the pipe, there is a small amount of resistance. You know the meaning of the resistance. Resistance offered by that blood, blood uh, by that uh, vessel to the flow of the blood. Resistance is the opposition to flow. What is the definition of resistance here? Resistance is the opposition to the blood flow. So who offers maximum resistance? That is my next question to you. Who offers maximum resistance? Do you know the answer? Maximum resistance kaha pe hota hai? 
is it artery arteriole capillary vein or venule who offers maximum resistance to the flow of the blood i am asking maximum resistance yes i am asking to you tell me the answer sushmita shreya brijesh awesome ashli kishor anyone no brijesh not veins veins mein maximum volume hai not the resistance maximum resistance nahi hai maximum resistance is an arteriole so in arteriole there is maximum resistance maximum resistance to the blood flows offered by maximum uh, by arterioles my last question whenever inflammation occurs uh, so during inflammation you know vascular permeability increased that is gaps are formed in the blood vessels so maximum vascular permeability is ki hoti hai sabse zyada inflammation mein kaun involved hota hai so which among the five involved maximum in, in inflammation so in inflammation maximum involvement in inflammation is of value so there are five portions and four important questions so let me summarize the answer of the four questions maximum resistance arteriole maximum area capillary maximum involved in inflammation venule and maximum volume is vein give me a answer do you have any doubt in that the four answers are written in front of you in front of you so what i have told you maximum resistance in arterioles that's why arterioles are known as resistance vessel maximum cross sectional area or surface area is capillary maximum blood volume is in veins and most commonly involved in inflammation is venules the big since they are most commonly involved in inflammation they have maximum vascular permeability everyone give me a thumbs up so these are four important mcqs asked in your previous year question papers in various exams everyone give me a thumbs up everyone so let me start the diseases with this overview we can proceed towards the diseases so as i told you i am going to teach you five diseases in this chapter the first chapter in the, the first disease in the chapter blood vessel disorders blood vessel diseases is hypertensive arteriosclerosis so the first disease i will discuss is hypertensive arteriosclerosis under which four diseases will be there i am discussing all four after that i will be going to atherosclerosis is a type of that only so either consider it separately or it is a type of this one only atherosclerosis so hypertensive arteriosclerosis then atherosclerosis you can say okay atherosclerosis we will write it separately hypertensive atherosclerosis aneurysm aortic dissection and vasculitis so these are the five portions we are going to discuss in next one and half hour or two hour let me start with the first one hypertensive arteriosclerosis what do you mean by hypertensive hypertension ka matlab kya hota hai we all know that the meaning of the hypertension is increased blood pressure okay so what is the normal blood pressure the normal blood pressure in humans is 120 upon 80 mm of mercury so systolic blood pressure is 120 mm and diastolic blood pressure is 80 mm we all know that right this is normal blood pressure the systolic and diastolic whenever any person have blood pressure more than 120 by 80 he or she if not treated and the pressure is increased continuously inside the blood vessel that pressure will cause damage to the wall of the blood vessel and the disease is known as hypertensive arteriosclerosis you got my point so let me draw a blood vessel here imagine either this is a artery vein or capillary this is any of the blood vessel so blood is present inside this is the blood present inside and these are the three layers intima you can see this is media and you can see this one is the external right so i'm drawing a rough diagram just to give you an overview so these are the three layers this can be any blood vessel it can be artery it can be vein it can be capillary it can be arteriole it can be venule and the blood is present in the human so normal when the blood pressure is 120 and 80 at the time of the systole and diastole it do not cause any damage to the walls because this pressure is normal but imagine instead of 120 80 if the blood pressure is more if it is 160 by 100 it can be anything right so that increased pressure will exert pressure continuously on the wall of the blood vessel so because the pressure is continuously exerted on the wall of the blood vessel the wall of the blood vessel will show certain changes inside the changes can be in the intima can be in the media can be in the externa so those changes is known as hypertensive arteriosclerosis most of the changes occurs in the arteries that's why hypertensive arteriosclerosis so because of hypertension the arteries of that particular person undergo sclerosis sclerosis means the wall will become thickened as a as a part of adaptation now you imagine now the pressure is more pressure is more so how the blood pressure wall normally the blood pressure wall is elastic you know the meaning of elasticity elasticity ka matlab kya hota hai whenever pressure is more they can expand whenever pressure is less they can retract so expansion retraction is a property it is known as elasticity so the wall of the blood vessel normally they are elastic in a healthy individual who who are not hypertensive so our blood vessels walls are 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 um, elastic but due to continuous increase in blood pressure the opposite 
of elasticity is the rigidity. They become hard. They become rigid. They become thickened and they are no more elastic. The opposite of elasticity is the rigidity. And rigidity in pathology is known as sclerosis. So it is the arteriosclerosis. That is arteries become sclerosed. What is the reason? The reason is hypertension. So spread the term. It is hypertensive arteriosclerosis. So it is the sclerosis of the arteries due to the hypertension. That is the disease we are going to study. Right. So can I move ahead? What soon you are asking? How can we know about the external? I will tell you the changes, whatever. External, hardly any changes uh, visible Soum, Soum Chaudhary. Most of the changes will be in the media. Let me finish the topic. Let me tell you what changes are there in the intima media and somewhere in the external. Then we can see. So that is hypertension. Now coming on the blood pressure. Let's classify blood pressure. What is normal blood pressure? I guess everyone knows it is 120 and 80. So that is systolic is 120 and diastolic is 80. The unit is mm of mercury. This is normal. Imagine a person having blood pressure systolic between 120 to 140. 120 to read it 140. It will be easy. Huh? 120 to 140. And diastolic is 80 to 90. Yaha pe 20 ka rise kiya, yaha pe 10 ka rise kiya. So 120 to 140 and 80 to 90. Such, such a person is known as pre-hypertension. This is not hypertension. It is pre-hypertension, right? Imagine uh, another person who is having blood pressure between 140 to 160, the systolic one. And diastolic one is 90 to 100. The diastolic one is 90 to 100. This person is having stage one hypertension. This person is having stage one hypertension. Imagine third person having hypertension more than 160, 160 to 200, you can say, right? And uh, the diastolic one is 100 to 120. This person is having stage 2 hypertension. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So we are classifying. Now, the last one is not written here. You can write when the systolic is more than 200. Oh my God, 200 mm of Ng. And diastolic is more than 120 mm of Ng. This hypertension is known as malignant hypertension. Please extend this table. This is malignant. So we are classifying the hypertension like this. So let me take all these under one category. In subco lelo, AK category may benign. So benign and malignant. So can I say simply, what is the normal blood pressure? Normal blood pressure is 120 by 80. When the blood pressure is rising and becoming 120 to 200 and 80 to 120, this is benign hypertension and more than 200 and 120. Systolic more than 200, diastolic more than 120. It is known as malignant. Can I say? I guess I can say. This is benign hypertension and this is malignant hypertension. Now, don't get confused with neoplasia. It is nothing like malignancy. Benign and malignant are the types of tumors. I know that. Just this hypertension is moderate rise, not severe rise. That's why it is known as benign. And here severe rise, sudden severe, extreme rise is there. That's why it is known as malignant. This is the only, only reason why we are giving the terminology is benign and malignant. Benign and less severe. Malignant and more severe. It is nothing to do with new patient tumors. It is a misnomer. Benign or malignant. Dekhi, ye sochna, ye malignancies hai. No. Benign hypertension, malignant hypertension. Benign hypertension, we can further classify into three categories. Pre-hypertension, stage 1 and stage 2. You know, I will classify karungi into three categories. I am not doing it further. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Is it clear till now? Now, I am going to teach you uh, diagrams. If someone is having benign hypertension, what will happen in the wall of the blood vessel? If someone is having malignant hypertension, what will happen in the wall of the blood vessel? So, we will see the morphological changes. So, let's start morphology. So, what is malignant hypertension? When systolic is more than 200, 200 mm of Hg. And diastolic is more than 120 mm of Hg. It is a severe rise in hypertension that can result in immediate death also. That can result severe headache, that can result in papillodema, retinopathy, that can uh, result in cerebral hemorrhages because pressure is so much, arteries will rupture. They will just do hemorrhages and patient can die instantly also. It is a severe hypertension that should be treated immediately. Okay, coming currently I am teaching you blood vessel pathologies. So I am interested in vascular pathology in hypertension. Due to hypertension, what is the change taking place in the wall of the blood vessel? That is my concern right now. So I will teach you that portion. Hypertension is very much in the body. But I am not teaching you right now the complete hypertension. I am teaching you in hypertension what change takes place in the wall of the blood vessel. That is my topic for teaching right now. That is vascular pathology in hypertension. You got my point? So see three diagrams. I am going to show you three diagrams one by one. It is very important. And many questions come. Many MCQs. I will show you the MCQs also. You can see the three diagrams. In all three diagrams, appreciate intima, the red cells. The red cells are the endothelial cells. Forming the intima. So intima is absolutely normal. I guess in all three. Right. In all three the intima is normal. 
there is some problem in media this is complete media in all of them can you see the smooth muscle cells the smooth muscle cells are forming media in all of them and external is not shown here hardly any external is there so main changes occurs in the media right now imagine all these three persons have hypertension the first one is having benign hypertension and the next two persons have malignant hypertension the next two so in malignant hypertension basically two changes occurs this one and this one but in benign only one change occurs so that is the point you know what is benign what is um, what is malignant right so can i tell you the three types now now imagine a person is having benign hypertension what do you mean by benign hypertension the systolic blood pressure is anything between 120 to 200 and diastolic is anything between 80 to 120 such a person is benign hypertension and he or she is not taking treatment for that so the blood present in the lumen is constantly exerting pressure on the walls so it will lead to some disease in the media of the blood vessel so can you see in this diagram the media of the blood vessel is showing a pink color material deposited can you see this pink color material deposited in the media this complete pink color material it is acellular it is homogeneous it is pink eosinophilic structureless material the name of this material is hyaline material so basically in benign hypertension hyaline material get deposited in media and that's why the disease is known as hyaline arteriosclerosis hyaline arteriosclerosis because by depositing in the media it is causing it is causing hardening of the wall the the wall of the blood vessel get hardened that's why due to the deposition of hyaline the arterial wall get hardened hyaline arteriosclerosis split the term to understand the meaning everyone give me a thumbs up so this is happening in benign hypertension so what is happening now i will come on malignant there are two possibilities so what is happening in benign hypertension it is occurring in moderate hypertension that is in benign hypertension so what is happening a structureless material the name of that structureless material is hyaline a structureless eosinophilic pink color material get deposited in the intimate basically in the media small amount in intimate basically in media and the disease known as hyaline arteriosclerosis so basically hyaline arteriosclerosis occurs in benign hypertension you all know what is benign hypertension the definition of benign hypertension let's start malignant hypertension in malignant hypertension there are two possibilities as i told you let's discuss this possibility first then i will come on the next possibility now see in this diagram the second diagram the middle diagram what is the problem you all can appreciate i can see there is a there is a intima lined by the endothelial cell there is no problem in that but i can appreciate a problem in the media what is the problem as at the beginning of the lecture only i have shown you normal media in the normal media smooth muscle cells are present these are smooth muscle cells but here in this diagram i have I, i am finding more smooth muscle cells as compared to normal normal se zyada hai that is because the blood in the lumen here the blood in the lumen have malignant hypertension that is blood pressure inside the lumen is more than 200 by 120 so that is constantly exerting pressure here that is blood pressure is more and it is exerting pressure on the wall of the blood vessel so that is a trigger because of which the smooth muscle cells present in the media they are doing cell division they are doing mitosis more and more you know in pathology chapter 1 there are five type of cell adaptations you may have studied i have taken a lecture on that hyperplasia hypertrophy atrophy metaplasia and dystrophy i guess all students knows that right so due to the stress these adaptations takes place so here what is the stress here the stress is more pressure the luminal blood have more pressure that is exerted on the wall so wall is under pressure that is the stress so as a part of adaptation the cells of the media the smooth muscle cells of the media they will do hyperplasia what is hyperplasia hyperplasia is increase in number not size hypertrophy is increase in size i am saying they will do hyperplasia they will divide 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 they will do mitosis and they will increase in number so since they increase in number after increasing in number they arrange themselves in concentric layers in concentric laminated layers have you got it so they are dividing 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 i am talking about what i am talking about the media in the media which cells are present smooth muscle cells so these smooth muscle cells present in the media of the blood vessel they are responding to high blood pressure the malignant range of blood pressure by dividing by more and more proliferating by more and more doing mitosis so this is known as hyperplasia and after doing hyperplasia they are arranged in concentric layers right have you ever cut onion in your kitchen i cut it daily while cooking right so when we cut onion have you cut the onion so the layers of the onion are like concentric layers the laminated concentric so it is looking like a onion that's why this one is known as onion skin arrangement 
or onion skin appearance right so you got my point so onion the skin of the onion if you see the onion from inside you can see multiple layers the layers are circular and one behind the other in a concentric rings everyone give me a thumbs up come on so that is known as hyperplastic arteriosclerosis so in benign hypertension it was hyaline which was deposited in the media and causing thickening of the causing causing hardening of the artery here the smooth muscle cells in the media they are proliferating arranging in concentric layers and causing hardening of the artery artery get hardened here here artery get hardened at both both places but the reason for hardening is different in benign hypertension the reason for sclerosis that is hardening is hyaline deposition and in malignant hypertension the reason for hardening or uh, thickening is you can say is hyperplasia of the smooth muscle cells that is known as onion skin appearance very important question uh, very important question uh, for the uh, mcqs right coming for the second change in malignant okay first we will see this one also can you see this diagram okay ye to hyaline ka hi hai what problem in this diagram so intima is normal i guess in the media you can see pink color acellular material the pink color acellular material is hyaline so this is the diagram of first one hyaline arteriosclerosis that is benign hypertension right now benign is done coming on malignant in the malignant the first one is hyperplastic so hyperplastic is seen in malignant hypertension right here onion skin arrangement is there so you can see the diagram what is onion skinning what is onion skinning so the smooth muscle cells in the media they proliferate proliferate so you can see the proliferating smooth muscle cells and after proliferating they arrange themselves in the concentric laminated layers so use the word concentric laminated layers of hyperplastic smooth muscle cells it looks like the bulb of a onion i forgot to put the, yeah i have put that diagram i have not forgot so can you see the onion the layers of the onion now compare the layers of the onion here with this artery in this artery also you can appreciate the various layers arranged in concentric layers so this is known as onion skin arrangement seen in malignant hypertension not in benign give me a thumbs up so this is the first finding in malignant in benign only one finding is there but in malignant two findings are there the first finding is this one if malignant hypertension continues 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 not treated to uske baad ho jayega ye the third one the third appearance so what is the third appearance let me come on the third appearance it is known as necrotizing arteriolitis dekho pathology is such a beautiful beautiful subject now ki the meaning is hidden in the name every day i say this to you just spread the term understand the language pathology is a subject along with the language i say this to student so now the language like you learn many languages now french greek so pathology is also a language you can learn the language and if you want to learn the language it is nothing you just decode it so see the name necrotizing arteriolitis here in the media there are two problem i can see intima again normal intima to tino mein hi normal hai so endothelial cells are normal in the media i can find two problems here can you enumerate what are the two problems any one of you can you see what are the two problems here the first problem is that can you see these pink pink color small small dot like material pink pink color a cellular dot like material this is necrosis this is necrosis in chapter 1 pathology there are five type of necrosis what are the five type of necrosis coagulative necrosis liquefactive necrosis caseous necrosis fat necrosis what is the fifth one fibrinoid necrosis so this is fibrinoid necrosis here so fibrinoid necrosis occurs in the ball means here the smooth muscle cells what they were doing here hyaline was deposited nothing was happening to smooth muscle cell here hyaline was deposited in benign one right here smooth muscle cells were proliferating 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 ye itne zyada ho jayenge na number mein they will increase too much in number that they will receive inadequate blood now blood is inadequate to supply all the cells so some of them start dying and death of the cell is necrosis you got my point pehle wo itne bad gaye they just proliferate 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 they increase tremendously in number but blood supply is limited they some of them are not getting adequate blood now because they increase in number so some of them will start dying focally so you can see the fibrinoid necrosis at many places give me a thumbs up so the first problem is fibrinoid it is not coagulative necrosis it is fibrinoid necrosis so that's why it is known as necrotizing because fibrinoid necrosis is one of the feature what is the second feature can you see what is the second problem in the same diagram oh my god i can see neutrophils in media ab neutrophils kahan se aaye media contain only one cell smooth muscle cell see media here see media here it contains only one cell spindle cell smooth muscle cell right but here in the third diagram i can find neutrophils 
multi-lobated neutrophils and media. The media is full of neutrophils. So there is inflammation in media. You got my point. Neutrophils mother kya hota? Acute inflammation. So acute inflammation in the wall of the blood vessel, that is the media. That's why known as arteriolitis. Itis. Itis in pathology is inflammation of that organ. So arteriolitis means inflammation of the artery. These were not arteriolitis. The first two were sclerosis. So due to hyaline deposition, the wall get thickened. That's why the wall get hardened, thickened, hardening ho jayegi, rigid ho jayegi. That's why sclerosis. In the second also, due to proliferation of smooth muscle cell, due to, due to proliferation of smooth muscle cell, hyperplasia of smooth muscle cell, the, the wall get thickened, hardened, rigid. That's why sclerosis. But in the third one, it is arteriolitis. Arteriosclerosis nahi hai. Arteriolitis, inflammation of the wall. So in the third, I can find two problems, necrosis and inflammation. Both are visible in the name. Necrotizing means necrosis. And arteriolitis, itis matlab inflammation. So everything is hidden in the name only. Everyone give me a thumbs up. What is the summary? Can you give me the summary? So what is the third one? The third one is necrotizing arteriolitis. Here two problems are there. What are the two problems? Fibrinoid necrosis in the media and acute inflammatory infiltrate full of neutrophil in the media. That's why known as necrotizing arteriolitis. That is the summary. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone. Everyone means everyone. So what is the summary of hypertensive vasculopathy? Tell me the summary. If someone is having hypertension, so it depends what is the range of hypertension. If someone is having benign hypertension, what will happen in the wall of the blood vessel, in the wall of the artery? If someone is having malignant hypertension, what will happen in the wall of the artery? Benign hypertension means the systolic is 120 to 200 mm of Hg and diastolic is 80 to 120. So this is benign. And malignant hypertension means systolic more than 200 mm of Hg and diastolic more than 120 mm of Hg. Yes, Kishore, Sushmita, you got it? Give me a thumbs up. Right? So what will happen? Can you tell me what will happen here? Here there are two possibilities. So in benign only one possibility, in malignant two possibilities. In benign, hyaline will get deposited in the media, causing causing hardening of the media. So hyaline arteriosclerosis is the finding here. And you can draw the diagram, you can label the diagram. In malignant one, hyperplasia will occur in the cells of the media and they arrange like onion scanning. That's why known as hyperplastic, hyperplastic arteriosclerosis and also known as onion scanning, onion scanning. And in malignant, another possibility, two things will happen in the media. Necrosis, the fibrinoid necrosis, not coagulative and and inflammation, that is neutrophils, that is arteriolitis. So necrotizing arteriolitis. So the three problems are hyaline arteriosclerosis, hyperplastic arteriosclerosis and necrotizing arteriolitis without any confusion with proper pronunciation, proper diagram. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Benign, only one possibility. Malignant, two possibilities. Shall I launch polls on this? Okay. One more thing here. Uh, hypertension is done. Sometimes we find in the media calcification. Only one find, finding calcification in the media. Can you see here? This is intima. This is the lumen containing blood. You can see the blood in the lumen, right? And this is intima. This is complete media. Inside media, there is only one abnormality. What abnormality? I can find that this blue color material, deep blue color material. This is calcification. So calcification in media is known as monkey birth arteriosclerosis. Here also, the ball of the artery get rigid. It get thickened. It get hard. But the reason for hardening is calcification. That's why it is known as monkey bug arteriosclerosis. It is calcification of the media. It is calcification of the media. Right? So, uh, so you can see all these diagrams. Here also this is lumen. You can see media mein this is blue color calcification. Calcification is deep blue in color. Appreciate this is lumen and this is deep deep blue calcification. The entire deep blue calcification in the media. It is an incidental finding. It doesn't have any symptoms. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone. I forgot to put polls here. There were many good questions I was having in MCQs form, but I forgot, unfortunately, I forgot to put it here. So let me start the second diseases. We have completed the first disease, hypertensive vasculopathy. Hypertensive vasculopathy is done. I taught you three terminologies there. Highline arteriosclerosis, hyperplastic arteriosclerosis, and necrotizing arteriolitis. So you should be aware of the three terms which occur in benign, which occur in malignant, and what is the diagram, what is the change. I was having image-based questions also based on that, but I forgot to put. Okay, anyways, so hypertensive vasculopathy is done. Coming on the second disease now, atherosclerosis. So let me start the next disease, atherosclerosis. Shall I start atherosclerosis? Are you people with me? 
Shall we go ahead with atherosclerosis? Yes. Yeah. So atherosclerosis, the new disease, the fresh disease, right? What is atherosclerosis? Ather atherosclerosis is a disease of intima. First learn, there are three layers, intima, media, externa. So it is a disease of intima. So something happening in intima. In intima, a, a plague will be formed. A fibrofatic plague is formed in the intima known as atheroma that obstruct the blood flow. Can you see this is a diagram from Robbins. You can see the layers. Appreciate that. Zoom the diagram if you can and appreciate the layers. I'm drawing the innermost layer intima here. See this normal diagram first. First thing normal. This one is normal. The first one. And the second diagram is showing atherosclerosis. I want to show you the layers here. In the first diagram, you can appreciate the endothelial lining. Can you appreciate the endothelial cells? Say yes or no. Just below the endothelial cells, don't forget to appreciate the endothelial tissue, the yellow one. A small yellow zone is shown. It is shown. But this zone is important because atherosclerosis is the disease of this zone only. I have taught you at the beginning of the lecture only and intima have two things. Endothelial layer and just below the endothelial layer a thin row of connective tissue that is known as subendothelial tissue. So endothelial cell and subendothelial tissue together constitute intima. It is very well visible in the first diagram, in the normal diagram. Just behind that appreciate media. I can appreciate media here made up of smooth muscle cells. This is complete media made up of media made up of smooth muscle cells. And I can well appreciate the externa also in this diagram. This is a normal diagram and after that I can appreciate the lumen. Everyone give me a thumbs up if you have appreciated normal diagram. Now compare this diagram with the second diagram. In the second diagram, we can see there is no problem in the external. External to normal here. Now I can appreciate smooth muscle cells from the media. Media have smooth muscle cells, right? Intima and externa don't have smooth muscle cells. The smooth muscle cells from the media, they are leaving the media and entering in the yellow space. That is intima. That is subendothelial tissue of intima and, and forming a plague there. This plague is known as fibrofatty plague or atheroma. And this is obstructing the lumen. See the lumen here and see the lumen here. So this disease is known as atherosclerosis. Not define atherosclerosis. What is atherosclerosis? Can you define it? Kishore, Sushmita, others, can you define it? What is atherosclerosis? Atherosclerosis is the disease of wall of blood vessel in which a fibrofatty plague is formed in the intima that will protrude in the lumen, obstructing the blood flow. This is the definition of atherosclerosis given in Robbins. So can I say it is a disease of intima? Say yes or no. Can I say it is characterized by plague formation or atheroma formation that, that protrude into the lumen and because of which there is obstruction to the blood flow. This is the definition. Now it is not a one step. There are multiple steps in the formation we will be discussing in detail. First a small is formed, then it will protrude, it will enlarge, it will complicate. So there are various stages we will be discussing all of them. This is the final diagram. I will show you how it is formed. How it is formed, what are the steps and what is the final composition we will be discussing in detail. Atherosclerosis. Now tell me, so I will tell you everything. The pathogenesis also, the steps also, the composition also. Right. Before that, tell me the name of the arteries. In human body, several arteries are present. You have read in anatomy. Right. There are several arteries we are having. In which artery it is most common? The answer is abdominal aorta. You know aorta is divided into multiple portions. I guess everyone knows that. So this is the heart. This is right side. This is left side. Aorta arises from left side. So let me draw the aorta once. This is the aorta, okay, okay, and let me draw the diaphragm, the diaphragm, where is the diaphragm, just suppose this is the diaphragm, right, divide aorta, in how many portions you can divide, divide the uh, aorta, so let me divide the aorta into multiple portions, so this is known as ascending aorta, this is known as arch of aorta, and this is complete descending aorta, so first divide aorta into three parts, ascending, arch, and descending, the descending aorta further divided into two parts, above diaphragm and below diaphragm, the two parts. Or you can say renal artery, suprarenal or intrarenal, right? So that is the complete division. We can see maximum atherosclerosis takes place in descending aorta. Descending aorta. So in descending aorta or abdominal aorta, right? Thoracic aorta is above diaphragm, abdominal aorta is below diaphragm. So it is an abdominal aorta, niche ka aorta, right? That is the most common site of atherosclerosis. It is a very important MCQ. After that, the second most common artery is the coronaries. So yesterday I taught you ischemic heart disease. Yes or no? I taught you there are three types of coronaries. So left is divided into two parts. Right coronary is right only. There is no further uh, division. But left coronary is divided into two parts. Left anterior descending and left, left circumflex. So the second most common artery is the coronary. The third most common artery in which atherosclerosis occurs is popliteal. 
the fourth most, most common artery in which atherosclerosis occurs is descending thoracic descending thoracic this was abdominal aorta this is thoracic aorta right now internal carotid internal carotid means brain brain may have and then circle of pillars you got my point cerebral or cerebral. so how you will learn the sequence this sequence is very important so i'm having a mnemonic for that so acp or deni traffic is cute right so funny mnemonic but yeah, but yeah you will you will you will learn using this mnemonic you you will learn the sequence so acp a stands for abdominal aorta c stands for coronaries of the heart p stands for popliteal acp delhi d stands for descending thoracic traffic descending thoracic delhi traffic dono ho gaya Descending thoracic aorta is 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 internal carotid and C is circle of pillars internal carotid. You got my point. So what is the sequence? A C P Delhi traffic is Q. Can you tell me the answers? Kishore, Sushmita, can you tell me the full form? So abdominal aorta, coronaries of heart, popliteal, popliteal in the leg, in the knee. You can say descending thoracic aorta, internal carotid in the brain and circle of pillars. You know brain cube. Right, everyone give me a thumbs up. Come on. So, you think abdominal aorta alag hai, descending th air, thoracic aorta alag hai. So, please give me a thumbs up. This is the sequence. After that, come on the risk factors. Risk, what are the risk factors for atherosclerosis? Kis mein hoga ye disease? Who are at more risk of having the disease known as atherosclerosis? We can divide the risk factors into three categories. What are the three categories? Non-modifiable risk factors, modifiable risk factors, and emergent risk factors. What do you mean by non-modifiable, modifiable? What do you mean by that? Now, there are some factors which we cannot remove, which we cannot modify. Just suppose the age. With, with time, we grow in age. So, what is my age now? After one year, I will be one year older. I cannot, I can never be younger now. So, age I cannot modify. Now, there are some diseases which occur in old age. So, we cannot make the patient young. We cannot ask the patient, don't get old, you will have this disease. So, that is not in our hand. So, that's why it is non-modifiable. The second is the gender. The gender cannot be changed. Now, nowadays, intersex surgeries are possible, I know. But gender usually does not change, right? So, male, some diseases are common in male, some are common in female. So, we cannot change that uh, pr pr prediction or risk factor. So, age cannot be changed. Gen gender cannot be changed. Genetics. So, if some families run, some diseases run in the families, if mother, father or first degree relative, siblings or children have some disease, so that particular person is already at high risk of having that disease. You cannot change the family. It is already there in the genes. So, these are non-modifiable risk factors. But there are some modifiable that you can ask the patient to modify. You can ask the person to modify. For example, diet. Take less cholesterol in the diet. Uh, physical activity, do physical activity, do exercise daily. So these are modifiable one. The one, it is in our hands. We can modify them. So this is the risk factor classification and some are newly emerging nowadays. So let me first give you non-modifiable one. The non-modifiable one are known as constitutional. I have already given the examples. Increasing age. You cannot decrease the age once it is already increased. Right? Male gender. So atherosclerosis is a disease of males. It is more common in males. Right? So if someone is male, he is already at high risk of having atherosclerosis. If someone is of increased age after 50, 60, he is already at high risk. It cannot be changed now. Family history. If someone, father or grandfather already have atherosclerotic disease, so the person is already at high risk. You cannot change that. Right? Genetic abnormalities cannot be changed. So these all are non-modifiable or constitutional, right? Modifiable one, the one which can modify is hyperlipidemia. If in the blood lipids are more, control your diet, control your diet, so lipid profile can be made better, right? Hypertension, if someone is hypertensive, hypertension is a risk factor for atherosclerosis. Just now I told you hypertension. What is happening in the hypertension? The blood in the lumen of the blood is exerting more pressure on the wall. So the wall is constantly getting stress, stress, stress. So it can get damaged and it can produce atherosclerotic lesion. So hypertension can lead to atherosclerosis. So if someone is having hypertension, get it controlled, get it treated. So if hypertension is controlled, is treated with the help of medicines, so person already have hypertension, lekin kam se kam it will not lead to atherosclerosis. So you are preventing atherosclerosis by treating hypertension, right? So it is modifiable, yes or no? Smoking, if someone is smoking, smoking increases the chance of atherosclerosis. Right. So, if someone is smoking, ask the person to quit the smoke. So, it is in his or her hand. So, that is modifiable. Diabetes. High blood glucose level increases the chances of atherosclerosis again. So, that can be controlled. And inflammation also increases the chances that can be treated. So, these are the modifiable risk factors. Coming on the third list, emerging risk factors. These are newly discovered risk factors, the emerging one. Obesity is one of them. 
So nowadays, obesity is very, very prevalent due to Western culture. Nowadays, people are doing less physical activity. Most of the jobs are sedentary jobs. So people are sitting in the office and doing their job. So most of the time they are sitting, they are not doing physical activity. So obesity is very common nowadays. And that is due to adoption of the Western culture. We know that. And obesity increases the risk of atherosclerosis. Hormones, estrogen, deficiency and oral contraceptives. Nowadays, oral contraceptives are very common for contraception. It also increases the risk of atherosclerosis. Physical inactivity, stressful, stressful life. Yes, sir, okay. Can you tell me the name of two infections that can lead to atherosclerosis or that increases the chances of atherosclerosis, viral or bacterial infection? So, it is very recent discovery that uh, one bacteria, the name of the bacteria is Chlamydia pneumoniae, and two viruses. The name of the two viruses is herpes virus and cytomegalovirus. These three microorganisms also increases the risk of atherosclerosis. Microorganisms. It is atherosclerosis is not an infectious disease. If I say typhoid, you will say yes, ma'am, typhoid is an infectious disease. It is caused by salmonella. If I say TB, yes, it is an infectious disease. It is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. So there are some infectious diseases, some are non-infectious diseases. We know the classification. We consider atherosclerosis as a non-infectious disease. It is not due to some bacteria, virus, or fungus, or parasite, right? But it is a recent discovery that one bacteria and two viruses increases the risk. They increase the risk. So can you tell me the name of that bacteria? It is Chlamydia pneumoniae. And can you tell me two viruses? The first virus is herpes and the second virus is CMV. Am I right? Let me check. Let me cross check. Yes, I am right. So it's a lot of questions. So I'm skipping the details. You already know the details. In all the details we have passed. So which is the risk factor? Which is more risk factor? Less risk factor? After 40 and 60 years of age, the chances of having atherosclerosis increases. Okay, what about gender? I have told you males are at more risk of having atherosclerosis than female. You have not asked ma'am why. Why males are at more risk of developing atherosclerosis? No, atherosclerosis can lead to many diseases. Right? If atherosclerosis occurs in coronary artery of heart, it can lead to MI. Right? That's why MI are more common. Attacks males are more common than females. You may have noticed it. Uh, if atherosclerosis is occurring in the coron um, coronaries, it, it will lead to MI. If it is occurring in the cerebral artery, it is occurring in the cerebral artery or circle of villus. It will lead to stroke. So again, strokes are more common in males as compared to females. Right? As a name, it is a general myth that males with tension, stress, stress. No, it is not that reason. The reason is that there is atherosclerosis. So in males, there is more atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis obstruct the lumen of the blood vessel. So if coronary blood vessel is obstructed, patient have MI. If uh, uh, cerebral uh, blood vessels is obstructed, uh, the person may have stroke. That's why MIs and strokes are more common in males than females. But what is the reason? Why it is happening? The reason, the answer to this question is estrogen. Estrogen is protective. The females have estrogen. Of course, the females have more estrogen as compared to males, you can say. So, estrogen is protective in atherosclerosis. Since females have estrogen in their body, that protect, they, they give a negative effect on the atherosclerosis. That's why females have less chances of developing atherosclerosis. That's why females have less MI and less stroke. But this is before menopause. Before menopause, you know menopause. Menopause is the point when the females stop menstruating, right? And the ovaries of the females get shrunk. And estrogen secretion from the ovaries becomes zero, become nil, right? That, that point is known as, that age is known as menopause. That, that stage of the female life is known as menopausal age. So, before menopause, this is the scenario. But after menopause, after menopause, what about male and female? Can you tell me? What is the scenario now? After menopause, male and female are at equal risk. Because here also estrogen is absent, here also estrogen is absent. So, in old age, the MI and strokes are common in male as well as female. But in young age, MI and strokes are common in males as compared to female. You got the reason? You may have noticed this in your community. Yes or no? So, that is the same thing written in front of you. So, premenopausal women are protected against atherosclerosis as compared to the same age matched man due to the protective effect of estrogen. But after menopause, after menopause, men and women both are actually at the same risk. Actually at the same risk. Everyone give me a thumbs up, right? So, that is the thing. Genetics, you already know. Family, you already know. This is my hyperlipidemia. I can skip this portion. You can read the theory by yourself of the risk factors. Let me come on the stages uh, of the pathogenesis. How, how atherosclerosis develops. The steps. The steps. That is the pathogenesis. Most difficult to understand. I will simplify this. So, pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. There is a theory. There is a theory given to prove that. 
the name of the theory is reaction to injury. This is the hypothesis or theory given or response to injury hypothesis. One and the same thing. Reaction to injury or response to injury because of which atherosclerosis will develop. So can you tell me the theory? In this theory, there are four steps. Listen like a story. It's very interesting story. Listen it like a story. Listen, there are four steps in the development of atherosclerosis. I will tell you all four steps right now. Listen, the first step is endothelial injury. Without injury, atherosclerosis cannot happen. For having atherosclerosis, endothelial injury is the cornerstone. It has to happen. Uske bina atherosclerosis nahi ho sakta hai. Endothelial injury se hi pura casket shuru hoga. Pura mechanism shuru hoga. So the first step is the end. You know endothelium, um, um, endothelium is the intima. So intimal injury. This is the lumen. So in the lumen something is present. Maybe some toxin of the bacteria, say maybe some poison, say maybe some drug, which is causing endothelial injury. The culprit can be anything. So there is a list of culprit, which is causing the endothelial injury. And endothelial injury is the cornerstone for developing atherosclerosis. There is no atherosclerosis till date, which is developed without endothelial injury. That's why the name of this theory is, this theory is response to injury. You got the meaning now? Why this theory is known as response to injury? Or reaction to injury. Injury is endothelial injury. As a response to this injury, atherosclerosis will develop. So, pehle to endothelial injury hona must. You got my point? Now, who is causing endothelial injury? Anything can cause, right? So, that can be the culprit. That is present in the blood. So, in the lumen of the blood, maybe some toxin, poison, some drug, anything can be present, some cytokine. That is causing the endothelial injury. So, as soon as the endothelium is injured, the endothelium will become activated and it will release TNF from it. That TNF will cause increased expression of VCAM. I will draw the diagram. And that VCAM will cause endothelial cell contraction because of which gaps will be created in the endothelium. So can you see this diagram? Beautiful diagram from Robbins I am going to show you now. Can you see the three layers? First, everyone appreciate. Appreciating the three layers is most important in, uh, in this uh, sequence, in this pathogenesis. Can you appreciate intima? Can you appreciate media? Can you appreciate external? Everyone give me a thumbs up. Yes. Intima, can you appreciate the two different layers in the intima? In the intima, there is endothelial cell. Ye to hue endothelial cell. Everyone knows. This is endothelial cells in the intima. Everyone have appreciated it, I guess. Right? Just below the endothelial cell, have you appreciated a thin layer of subendothelial tissue? Ye bhi utna important hai. Everyone can see media and external. Right? There is no gap. Now there is injury. These are the injurious agent, which are the culprits. It can be increased amount of lipid in the blood. The increased amount of the lipid in the blood can cause endothelial injury. Increased amount of blood pressure. If the blood pressure is more, it can cause endothelial injury. That's why I told you hypertension is a risk factor for atherosclerosis because it will lead to endothelial injury. Smoking, smoking mein jo bhi cheese hota hai, nicotinic acid, that, that will cause endothelial injury. Homocystin, hemodynamic factors, toxins, bacteria, virus, antibodies, anything can cause endothelial injury. So, chalo endothelial injury ho gai. Ab kya kare? Endothelial injury is done. Okay, let me erase this diagram. And come on the same diagram again. Okay. Endothelial injury is done. What will happen now? If endothelial injury is done, endothelial cells secrete TNF from them. They will secrete TNF, tumor necrotic factor. And because of the secretion of TNF, these cells express, uh, these cells will express VCAM on their surface. More and more VCAM. VCAM is a receptor that will be expressed. And this will cause endothelial cell contraction. So all these cells will contract and gaps will be created between them. Can you see the gaps? Now, I appreciate there is a gap. Can you see this is an endothelial cell, this is an endothelial cell, but I can see a gap between the two. Can I, can, have you, or have you noticed? I can see a gap. Okay, I will draw one diagram, just now I will show you all four steps. Then I will show you the theory which is given in Robbins. So, I will draw a beautiful diagram for all of you. You have to be attentive here. Listen, I am drawing the endothelium here. Can you see this is the endothelium I am drawing? So, these are the endothelial cells I am drawing. Just below the endothelium, I am interested in subendothelial tissue. This is subendothelium. It is also intima. Both of them are constituting intima. Now I am drawing the media. This is complete media. It is the thickest layer. It contains smooth muscle cells. Let me draw a few cells, smooth muscle cells in the media. Right. And this is external. I am not interested in external actually. So this is external. Now lumen contains blood. Right. This is blood. In the blood, let me draw a few fat cells, adipose cells. So this is cholesterol. This is cholesterol, fat, lipid, whatever you say. One and the same thing. It can't. Blood may be a Right. And blood contains WBC also. Blood contains five types of WBC. What are the five types of WBC? Three are granulocytes, two are agranulocytes. Neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil. These are granulocytes. 
And what are eight other sites? Lymphocyte, monocyte. I'm interested in monocyte. So I'm drawing only monocyte. This is a monocyte. Monocyte and lymphocyte. So I'm drawing the eight granulocytes. Few of them are monocytes or say few of them are lymphocyte. I'm not interested in neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil. I'm saying everything is present in blood. Link to very calm time is a kutta banari. Right. Have you understood this is normal diagram? Abhi tak mene kuch nahi kiya. This is normal. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone. Now some, some culprit is present in the blood. Some culprit is present in the blood that is causing endothelial injury. So that is causing. So endothelial culprit is present. Injurious agent. It can be some virus, it can be some bacteria, some toxin, some poison, maybe high hypertension, maybe cystinuria, maybe homocystinuria, anything is causing. Now, as a response to injury, what will happen? Everyone see here. As a response of injury, these endothelial cells will contract and they will create gaps between them. So maybe, let me draw a gap. Let me see if I can erase it. Let me erase here. Let me erase here. This endothelial, I will draw new endothelium for you, right? So let me, okay, let me again use the eraser here. Okay, I'm drawing new endothelium here. The pan bopis kasi aega, eraser se. Okay, got it. So let me draw new endothelium. So now because of the endothelial injury, the endothelial cells are contracting and please appreciate the gap. Just below the endothelium, subendothelial tissue is there. Baki sab vasa ka vasa hai hai. The only thing I have drawn the gaps. These are the gaps. That is, vascular permeability is increased. It is because of expression of BCAM on the surface of the endothelium. So when injurious agent is coming causing injury, BCAM is increased causing the gap. Do you have any problem in that? I guess no problem. No, listen. Everyone listen. There is subendothelial tissue. Can you see the subendothelial tissue? Just below the endothelium, the blue one is the subendothelial tissue. It is a part of intima only. It's made two cells. Where are the two cells? It's made the first these monocytes and lymphocytes will come from this gap. From this gap, the monocyte will enter and from this gap, T lymphocyte will enter. They are entered from this gap. Monocyte and lymphocyte. Please, please mind my words. Once monocyte leave the blood and come in this space, endothelial, subendothelial space, no monocyte is no more monocyte, it is known as macrophage. This monocyte is known as macrophage. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So this is macrophage, right? And Along with this, the fat will also enter. The fat, the lipid, that will also enter from this gap. So, this gap is coming from Monocyte is coming. Once monocyte is coming inside, it is known as macrophage. Number one. Lymphocyte is coming. Lymphocyte is known as lymphocyte only. It is special name. In blood also, it is known as lymphocyte. Here also, it is known as lymphocyte. And the lipid. Lipid may cholesterol, triglyceride, everything is coming. Right. Now, this lipid. This lipid is ingested by the macrophage. It is ingested by the macrophage. So I will draw the lipid droplets inside the macrophage. Now this cell, now this cell, it is a macrophage containing lipid inside. So this is known as foam cell. Foam cells are formed. So monocyte first convert into macrophage and macrophage after ingesting the fat, it converted into foam cell. This fat is oxidized LDL basically. The fat, which is fat? This is not eating This is oxidized LDL. So oxidized LDL will be formed and that is ingested by the macrophage. Now macrophage converted into foam cell. Till now, I am having two cells with me in this space, the sub-endothelial space. I am having foam cells. How it is formed, you know that. And I am having lymphocyte. Lymphocyte do not ingest fat. It will remain only lymphocyte only. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Now, what is happening? The next step, see the media. In the media, what cells are present? We know in the media, smooth muscle cells are present. Does they present? Yes. These smooth muscle cells will leave the media and migrate in this space. In this space, we will use it. So, lumen se do cell aaya aur media se ek cell aaya. So, these smooth muscle cells are coming in the same space. The same space. That is sub-endothelial space. So, these cells are smooth muscle cells. First, they are migrating from the media and entering into the intima, sub-endothelial layer of the intima. And after migrating, they are proliferating there. Right? So, first they are migrating. And after proliferating, they divide, divide, divide and many will be there. Right? So, migration and proliferation of the smooth muscle cells from media to intima. So they are leaving the media and moving to the intima. After going in the, in the intima, they are proliferating. Right? These are the smooth muscle cells. Normally, intima don't have smooth muscle cells. Right? Media have smooth muscle cells. But here, smooth muscle cells are entering in the intima. Subendothelial layer of the intima. Actually, subendothelial layer is the space where atherosclerosis will become. Atheroma will become. Right? So these smooth muscle cells 
विल ऑल्सो ईट फैट फैट तो वहाँ पे पहले से ही है ना ऑक्सीडाइज एल डी एल सो दिस ऑक्सीडाइज द येलो एल डी एल इज ऑल्सो इंजेस्टेड बाई दैन ऑल्सो लाइट लाइट माइक्रोफेजेस सो वी हैव फैट इंजेस्टेड स्मूथ मसल सेल्स राइट सो टोटल थ्री टाइप ऑफ सेल्स आर देयर नाउ इन दिस स्पेस वॉट आर द थ्री टाइप ऑफ सेल्स टू आर कमिंग फ्रॉम द ल्यूमन मोनोसाइट एंड लिम्फोसाइट मोनोसाइट आफ्टर लिविंग द ल्यूमन कमिंग इन द स्पेस नोन एज माइक्रोफेज and this macrophage will ingest the oxidized ldl and convert it into foam cell so the first cell is foam cell second cell is lymphocyte which is coming from the lumen from the blood third cell is smooth muscle cell which is coming from the media and after coming in the from the media into the edema it is proliferating and ingesting the fat also so fat ingested oxidized ldl ingested smooth muscle cell we will not call it a foam cell these three cells along with the fat total we are having four things with, with, with us they will rearrange themselves and form atheroscleroma can i take the next page and show you the diagram of atheroma can i take the next page and show you the diagram of the atheroma so this is how atheroma form they will rearrange themselves so what is the rearrangement uh, in the rearrangement in the center there will be the fat and the three type of cells we are having now what are the three types of cells we are having you know that it in the center there will be fat and surrounding it we will be having foam cells few of them are foam cells few of them are lymphocytes and outermost will be the smooth muscle cells so this is a diagram of atheroma which is present in the subendothelial cells it will grow 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 so it will protrude in the lumen and obstruct the blood flow of the lumen you get answer i tried my i tried my best now i will tell you all the four steps here from brogans the same story i will continue here so have you got it shall i continue so what is the first thing the first thing is the endothelial injury without which it cannot happen the name of the theory is reaction to injury theory right so endothelial injury is there endothelial injury is there which is the corner stone for the development of atherosclerosis due to endothelial injury as soon as endothelial injury is there endothelium will become activated tnf will be expressed and we can will increase the permeability means gaps will be formed the gaps will be formed the gaps we can appreciate the gap one of the gap is shown here and from this gap you can see cells are entering can you see cells these are monocytes and lymphocytes both will enter and can you see the yellow color of fat is also entering let me highlight few yellow color fat fat lobules so fat is also entering from the lumen right so both things are entering have you got it so you can see in this diagram also this is this is endothelium here there is a gap again this is continuous here there is a gap and again there is a continuous from one of the gap the first gap the cells are entering the cells are entering and from the second gap the fat is entering The cells are two type of cells: the lymphocytes and macro monocyte. Monocyte once leave here, it is known as monocyte, and once it is coming inside, it is known as macrophage. After going inside, the fat which is coming, it will get oxidized, and oxidized LDL is ingested by them. Can you see? Zoom the cell and see. This is the macrophage ingested the oxidized LDL. It is known as foam cell, right? And you can see the media. This is the media. The smooth muscle cells are. Coming from the media also, and they will also ingest the fat. So this is how atheroma is formed. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So second step is migration of leukocyte. The WBC will leave the lumen and enter in the subendothelial space. Now subendothelial space is already there. Uh, uh, the gap between the endothelial cells is already there. So two type of lymphocyte uh, WBCs, monocyte and T lymphocyte. They will enter in the subendothelial space. They will cross the endothelium from the gap. They will cross the endothelial barrier and they will move in the subendothelial space. The monocyte converts into macrophage. You may think of the same diagram. This is a monocyte, but once it leaves the blood vessel and enters the subendothelial space, it is known as macrophage. After moving here, it will ingest fat, and fat ingested macrophage is a foam cell. So first, monocyte get converted to macrophage. Macrophage will ingest the fat and convert it into foam cell. Again and again, I am showing you different diagrams. Right, and. it will ingest the oxidized ldl ldl will become oxidized the fat is ldl that will become oxidized and that is ingested by the macrophage so this is how foam cells are formed the oxidized ldl is ingested by the macrophage such a macrophage which has ingested the fat the oxidized ldl is known as foam cell yes or no shall i move ahead right so till now what we have learned the first step was response to injury there is a endothelial injury the first step in the second step migration of the wbc two wbc is two leukocytes monocyte and t lymphocyte coming on the third step in the third step the smooth muscle cells from the media first they will migrate from where to where migration means ek jagah chhodna aur dusri jagah jana so smooth muscle cell will migrate from media to intima 
in the subendothelial space of intima. Right. So, and after going there, they will proliferate, proliferate, proliferate. Give me a thumbs up. Come on. So, after that, there is migration of smooth muscle cells from the media to the subendothelial space of the intima. Right. And there is proliferation of the smooth muscle cells. Smooth muscle cells also ingest the lipid. But they are not known as foam cells. So, you can see best diagram. Beautiful diagram showing the story. Can you see these are the smooth muscle cells? See, this one is migrating. They are migrating from the media to the intima. And in the intima, there is already foam cells are present and T lymphocytes are present. So, total three types of cells will be there. Right? Now, see, beautiful diagram. What it is showing? It is showing, it is showing one of the cells which is T lymphocyte. It is not ingesting fat. It is not ingested fat. It is a T lymphocyte. It is coming from the human. The another type of cells I am drawing with green color. These are macrophages. These all are macrophages. It is also coming from the human. These are monocytes converted to macrophages. They have ingested fat. That's why these are known as foam cells. These are known as foam cells. And see the third type of cells I am drawing with purple color. These smooth muscle cells. These all are smooth muscle cells. They are coming from the media. First two are coming from the lumen. And this one is coming from media. It is already also ingested, cell, uh, ingested fat. So it contains macrophages. It contains smooth muscle cells. It contains T lymphocytes. So three type of cells along with the fat. Right. And finally, they will rearrange themselves and form a lesion known as atheroma. You got my point? You got my point? So, in this lesion, the center is made by the fat. So, the center, the lipid will form the core. The core is formed by the lipid. And all three cells will arrange at the periphery. And it will protrude in the lumen, forming atheroma. This is how atheroma is formed. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. Tell me the four steps. Who will tell me the four steps? The first step is the endothelial injury. Then, migration of WBC inside. The two WBCs will go, monocyte and lymphocyte, T lymphocyte. The third step is that smooth muscle cell migration from media to intima and their proliferation. Fourth is the rearrangement of the cells, that is maturation of the plague. Everyone give me a thumbs up. I cannot simplify more than this. This is how atherosclerosis plague is formed. Do you have any problem in understanding? The first step, endothelial injury. The second step, leukocyte migration, WBC migration. After migration, this is the third step showing smooth muscle cell migration and proliferation and lastly maturation of the plague maturation of the plague so these are the four diagrams so in this diagram here this is the space just below the endothelium where everything is happening in this space two cells are coming from the lumen that is monocyte and lymphocyte and one cell is coming from the media smooth muscle cell or ye tino milke bana rahe hain atheroma atherosclerosis or center is filled by the fat give me a thumbs up say something if you got the pathogenesis give me a thumbs up what are the what are your names? Kishore, Sushmita, others. Is anyone else watching me live? Have you got it? Give me a thumbs up if you got it. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Come on. Have you got it? So this is how the complete story is in front of you. Give me a thumbs up. And you can see. This is how. Can you see? Okay. See this diagram also. This is intima. This is endothelial cell. And just below the endothelial cell, this is complete subendothelial cell. And this one is the media. You can appreciate this is media. And you can see this is external. This is external. This one is the intima. This one is the intima. Can you see inside the intima? Please appreciate this is atheroma. So the core is formed by the lipid. The core is formed by the lipid. Apart from lipid, three type of cells are noticed. What are the three type of cells? I can notice these cells. These are foam cells. Now you know what are foam cells. Right. I can notice these cells. These cells are T lymphocytes. You know from where they are coming. Right. And I can notice these cells. These are smooth muscle cells which are coming from the media here. So this is the diagram of atheroma which is present in the intima of the blood vessel. So this is the complete story. Right. Now I am coming on the stages of the development. So there are six stages. You have to learn the six stages given in Robbins. Stage one is initial fatty dot. Initially a small fatty dot. Stage two is fatty streak. You have to learn the names. Stage one is fatty dot. Stage two is fatty streak. Stage 3 is intermediate. Stage 4 is atheroma. Stage 5 is fibroatheroma. And stage 6 is complicated atheroma. So first learn the sequence. What is the sequence? Fatty dot, fatty streak. Intermediate lesion. Then atheroma is formed. Now atheroma becomes fibrous. Fibroatheroma. And then in the end it will complicate. Complicated atheroma. So these are the 6 stages you have to learn. Fatty dot, fatty streak, intermediate, atheroma, fibroatheroma, complicated atheroma. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I will give you the details. Coming on the first one, you can see stage 1, 2, 3, 4 here. Stage 1 is fatty dot. Actually, only lipid core is there. 
Here only lipid core is there with few foam cells. It is not visible from outside. Uh, so I don't have any diagram for that. You can imagine it like this. Let me draw a blood vessel here. Inside the blood vessel, if you see the lumen of the blood vessel, just suppose in the intima, it may be, so these are the layers. This is intima, media, externa. So here it is present, a fat core. But if you see it from outside, it is not visible here. It is normal. It is not visible. It is not visible. So the main point is that fatty dot is not visible. Fatty dot is not visible. Coming on the second fatty streak. Fatty dot is not visible. Coming on fatty streak. Fatty streak may be lipid laden. Core hair with few macrophages. It is the earliest visible lesion. fatty streak. A small protrusion you can see from the lumen. You are looking from here. Na? You are looking from lumen. So, here there is a protruded area, not protruded, you can see a yellowish area. So, you, you will, this is a precursor lesion from which now it will occur. It can occur in early stages of life also, right? So, you can see this is the real diagram. I can see a yellow line here. Later on, at this stage, it will protrude out and form the complete ethroma. Currently, I can see a streak. I can see a streak. So, streak is the earliest visible lesion. Can you see in this diagram a small area here? A small area here. These are holes in the bifurcation. Both normal. A small yellowish area. Appreciate the color change here and here. Right. So that is fatty streak. It is not a protruded area. So all these are fatty streaks. In areas pay future may chalke atherosclerosis over. So that is the earliest visible lesion. You got my point. So fatty dot is the earliest lesion. But fatty streak is the earliest visible lesion. You got the two MCQs. Everyone. You got the two MCQs. If in your exam earliest lesion is asked, go with fatty dot. If in your exam, earliest visible lesion is asked, go with fatty streak. So stage 1 and stage 2 is done. Stage 1, stage 2. Coming on the third stage, that is intermediate type. In the intermediate type, a small extravascular lipid pool will also come and a small protrusion is there. Slight protrusion. Now, complete atheroma will be formed. A complete well mature atheroma will be formed and it will protrude into the lumen. Then later on, it will become fibrous. It will become fibrofatty flake and it will become fibrous atheroma. And in the end, in the end, it will be complicated, right? So we are done. We are done here. Coming on the clinical effects. Clinical effects are very easy. It will narrow the lumen. So it will cause ischemia of that particular organ. Wherever atherosclerosis is present in the blood vessel of that organ, ischemia will happen. If the organ is hard, it can lead to MI. If the organ is brain, it can lead to stroke. It can lead to necrosis also. It can lead to thrombi and embolism also. So these are the effects. So heart may over MI, brain may over stroke. Aorta may hoga aneurysm, small intestine may hoga gangrene, ischemic bowel disease, lower extremity may hoga gangrene. So you may be knowing these are the effects. Depending on which blood vessel is obstructed, that will be the effect in that particular organ. I am done with second disease also. Till now, I taught you two diseases in this lecture. I am teaching you diseases of the blood vessel. Today's chapter is blood vessel. This chapter is about blood vessel. I taught you two diseases here. The first disease I taught you is hypertensive vasculopathy. Here I taught you three types. One in benign, two in malignant, right? The benign one is the highline arteriosclerosis and the malignant one is hyperplastic arteriosclerosis and necrotizing arteriolitis. So we have completed that our first portion. After that, we have started another topic. Another topic was atherosclerosis. What I taught you about atherosclerosis and now I'm starting the third one, aneurysm, right? Give me a thumbs up, everyone, give me a thumbs up. Can you tell me, can someone tell me the atherosclerosis summary? Atherosclerosis, the summary of atherosclerosis. Can you tell me the summary of atherosclerosis? So I taught you what is the definition of atherosclerosis. Then I taught you the sides, the sides, the sequence of the arteries for the prediction. So sides are there. After that, I taught you the risk factors dividing into three categories, non-modifiable, modifiable and emerging risk factors. After that, we have seen the stages of the formation, the pathogenesis. In the pathogenesis, I taught you a theory. The name of the theory is response to injury or reaction. Reaction to injury theory. Right? After that, I taught you the stages. So, there are six stages. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You may be knowing the name of each stage and the relevance of that. After that, I taught you the clinical features in the individual organ. Everyone give me a thumbs up first. Have you got it? Do you have any problem? Kishore, Sushmita, others. Do you have any problem? Shall I proceed ahead? So that is atherosclerosis. After that, I'm moving to the next topic now, aneurysm. What is aneurysm? Can you tell me what is aneurysm? Can anyone of you tell me, define aneurysm? What is aneurysm? Aneurysm is the focal dilatation of the wall of the blood vessel. Can you see this portion of the blood vessel is protruded out? 
it is dilated so it is the focal abnormal dilatation of the ball of the blood vessel due to weakening of the ball this portion the ball got weakened that's why it protruded out the ball in this portion is uh, weakened that's why it is protruding out so this is known as aneurysm so aneurysm is localized abnormal dilatation of the ball of the blood vessel or the ball of the heart that is aneurysm you can see it can occur in heart also this portion is aneurysm you can see it is protruded out you can see this is it can occur at bifurcation also so you can see it is protruded out now what are the clinical features of aneurysm due to aneurysm the blood flow can be altered you can see here the blood is coming with a flow with a flow but here blood will show stasis in this portion the blood will show stasis so stasis lead to thrombosis and thrombosis can lead to embolism we know the pathophysiology of thrombosis i told you thrombosis in the pathophysiology of thrombosis stasis is one of the thing that is seen in virchow triad in virchow triad three things are there and stasis is a risk factor for thrombosis so actually aneurysm is causing stasis of the blood flow and stasis of the blood flow is leading to thrombus formation can you see this is a thrombus form once the thrombus is detached it will lead to embolism so the first is thrombus and then embolism these are the effects right sometime aneurysm can get ruptured can you see it is ruptured and after rupturing it can cause severe emergencies some emergency situation may arise there and sometimes it may compress the surrounding structure the neighboring structure here you can see this is the aneurysm in a artery it is compressing a nerve i can see a nerve the aneurysm is compressing the nerve so this person will have neuropathy due to the compression of the nerve by the aneurysm so what are the clinical features it can be due to compression it can be due to rupture it can be due to thrombus it can be due to embolism that is the clinical features so we have learned the definition of aneurysm we have learned the clinical features of aneurysm what is the definition of aneurysm aneurysm is focal dilatation of the blood vessel due to the weakness weakness of the ball of the blood vessel now you see there are two things this is a normal blood vessel if i am saying the complete blood vessel is dilating the complete blood vessel is dilating vasodilatation it is not aneurysm i am saying the focal dilatation focally focally at some portion it is dilated focal dilatation of the blood vessel so this portion is known as aneurysm because this portion of the ball is weak that's why this is dilated so weakness of of ball is the is the uh, is the pathogenesis here now after uh, definition i taught you the clinical features now i'm teaching you classification of aneurysm we can classify aneurysm based on three criteria i'm going to tell you three criteria based on which we can classify aneurysm right based on three criteria the first criteria is based on composition of the ball the second criteria based on the shape of the aneurysm and the third criteria the most important one is the mechanism is the pathologic mechanism which is causing the weakness of the ball so let's come on the first criteria that is composition of the ball so there are two type of aneurysm based on this criteria true aneurysm and pseudo aneurysm pseudo aneurysm is false false aneurysm let me draw a diagram uh these are the three layers let me draw the three layers so this is intima you can see this one is intima of the ball of the blood vessel this one is media let me draw the media here this one is media and outermost is the externa let me draw a thin externa here right whenever aneurysm is taking place here just suppose here aneurysm is taking place so if all the three layers are protruding out all three layers are protruding out it is known as true aneurysm see this diagram so in true aneurysm you can see this is a normal blood vessel can you notice normal blood vessel here this one is normal in this you can see intima media externa everything is protruding out so intima media externa all three layers are protruding out that's why this is a true aneurysm this is a true aneurysm on the contrary see the another one see the another one so this is the there is a hole there is a gap in the ball of the blood vessel so what will happen bleeding will start this is the bleeding so bleeding is starting from this hole or gap body tries to limit the bleeding by forming a connective tissue covering so body is forming a connective tissue covering to limit the bleeding not is looking like an aneurysm it is looking like a focal dilatation but actually it is not an aneurysm it is a hematoma it is a hematoma hematoma is formed to limit the bleeding so the ball is made up of connective tissue here the ball is not intima media externa it is a connective tissue that's why it is known as false or pseudo aneurysm so this one is false or pseudo aneurysm you got my point so in true aneurysm basically all three layers intima media externa is present in the wall of the aneurysm and in pseudo one only fibrous connective tissue is present in the hematoma everyone give me a thumbs up so true and pseudo are the two types of aneurysm based on the composition of the wall what is present in the wall if all three layers are present in the wall it is known as true aneurysm 
it is known as true aneurysm have you got it and if only fibrous tissue covering is present in the wall it is known as false aneurysm or pseudo aneurysm actually pseudo aneurysm is a hematoma actually it is a hematoma the same is shown in this diagram also have you got it this same so you can see this is a normal blood vessel in the normal blood vessel i can see this is intima this is media this is external if all of them intima media external are protruding out it is true one but here there is a hole that is limited by the connective tissue so this is pseudo one i guess you got it so based on the composition of the wall it is of two type true and false false is also known as pseudo as the name indicate true true hai wo sach mein ka aneurysm hai wo wall ka protrusion se bana hai lekin false is pseudo aisa lagta hai wo aneurysm hai par wo actually aneurysm nahi hai wo hematoma hai right depending on the shape of the aneurysm it is of five type based on the five type of the shapes right if if the protrusion occurs unilateral ek hi taraf ho raha hai so it is secular if it is occurring overall throughout the circumference imagine this is a artery right okay let me show you in the next diagram okay you can see this is the artery this is the wall of the artery now if aneurysm is taking place focally like this this one is secular but if aneurysm is taking place throughout the circumference it is fusiform so i guess this is secular i guess this is fusiform you got the difference between secular and fusiform right so secular is only on one side fusiform is throughout circumference cylindrical is long like a parallel like a cylinder a parallel dilatation like a cylinder serpentine is multiple small dilatation looking like a snake serpentine and the last one is the racemos that is interconnections so what are the five shapes secular fusiform cylindrical serpentine and racemos so based on the shape it is of five type right you can understand the difference between secular and fusiform the first two in secular one side dilatation is there and in fusiform throughout circumferentially dilatation is there right you got it so based on the shape it is of five type based on the composition of wall it is of two types pseudo and false true and false false is also known as pseudo based on the shape it is of five types fusiform secular after that what was the shape cylindrical then cylindrical ki baat kiya tha serpentine and racemos serpentine and racemos these are the five shapes you can draw them now the most important depending on the pathological mechanism what i have taught you why it is happening the reason for why is the weakening of the wall so this is a artery you can imagine this portion of the wall got weakened weakened that's why when blood is flowing even at normal pressure 120 by 80 not high pressure so that normal blood pressure is causing protrusion here so this portion is protruded out because the wall is weak so my question is who is causing the weakness who is causing the weakness there may be some disease now that is causing the weakness so who is causing the weakness that is pathogenic mechanism that is causing weakness in the wall the wall that portion is weak that's why it protruded out so who is causing the weakness who is causing the weakness so weakness can be caused by most commonly just a second most commonly weakness is caused by atherosclerosis just now we read atherosclerosis so if atherosclerosis is present in the wall that area is weakened so it can protrude out so hypertension i taught you the first disease hypertension hypertension is a risk factor for atherosclerosis right that is the second disease i taught you and atherosclerosis is a risk factor for aneurysm so the third disease i am teaching you so hypertension leads to atherosclerosis and atherosclerosis can lead to aneurysm give me a thumbs up so most commonly the weakness of the wall is caused by atherosclerosis second most commonly it is caused by syphilis syphilis is caused by a bacteria right uh, trypanoma pallidum that can also cause weakness of the wall right that can inflame the wall and cause weakness of the wall the third it can be any other microorganism any so it is known as mycotic so three causes are there who is causing the weakness so this is the wall of the blood vessel so focal weakness is there this portion of the wall undergo weak that's why it protrude out that's why it is protruding out and producing aneurysm but weakness is caused by atherosclerosis or by syphilis or by infection so either atherosclerosis plague is there that is causing weakness or syphilis bacteria is causing the inflammation or some other bacteria virus is causing the inflammation so this one is atherosclerotic aneurysm this one is leutic syphilitic is known as leutic aneurysm and infection wala is known as mycotic mycotic aneurysm now the term mycotic is a misnomer looking at the mycotic you may feel like it is a fungus but it is not necessary it is always fungus it can be anything bacteria virus anything you got my point so that is the thing that is the thing so what is causing the weakness weakness that depends so we are done with the classification depending on composition the two type true and false depending on the shape the five types secular fusiform cylindrical racemos 
एंड वन मोर वॉज देयर क्या कहते हैं उसको सर्पेंटाइन द सर्पेंटाइन एंड रेसिपोज डिपेंडिंग ऑन द पैथोलॉजिकल मेकेनिज्म इट इज ऑफ थ्री टाइप हु इज कॉजिंग द वीकनेस सो मोस्ट कॉमनली एथेरोस्क्लोरोसिस देन सिफिलिस और ल्यूटिक and caused by the infection that is mycotic mycotic everyone give me a thumbs up shall i proceed the most common is the atherosclerotic so we will see the details of these three one by one before ending the topic right so let's start atherosclerotic aneurysm atherosclerotic aneurysm is the most common type most common cause of aneurysm it occurs in old males usually right what is the most common site most common site wahi hogi jo jo atherosclerosis ki most common site thi atherosclerosis ki most common site was abdominal aorta That's why the aneurysm, the aneurysm caused by atherosclerosis is also the most common site is uh, abdominal aorta. Now in the abdominal aorta, we divide abdominal aorta into two portions. As I have told you, I've drawn this diagram previously also. So this is the aorta. I want to show you the two portions of the abdominal aorta. Now tell me the parts of the aorta. Who will tell me? Just now I've taught you. This is ascending aorta. This is arch of aorta, and this is complete descending aorta. First, let me divide descending aorta into two portions based on the uh, this thing diaphragm. So let me draw the diaphragm. So above diaphragm, the descending aorta is the thoracic. It is thoracic, and below diaphragm, it is abdominal. It is abdominal. So descending aorta is divided into two portions based on diaphragm, thoracic, and abdominal. Abdominal, I will further divide. I will further divide. So let me draw the two kidneys here. These are the two kidneys. So these are the renal arteries coming from the aorta into the kidneys in the abdominal aorta. so we are dividing into two portions as suprarenal intrarenal so abdominal aorta further divided into suprarenal intrarenal so tell me the most common site of aneurysm the atherosclerotic aneurysm so my answer is this intrarenal abdominal aorta so it is an aorta but not in ascending aorta uh, the syphilitic one will be in, uh, 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 the syphilitic one will be in ascending aorta the syphilitic one the leutic one that i will teach you next उसकी मोस्ट कॉमन लोकेशन इज असेंडिंग एयोटा सो एथेरोस्क्लेरोटिक वन इज नॉट इन असेंडिंग एयोटा नॉट इन आर्च ऑफ एयोटा डिसेंडिंग बाय नॉट इन थोरेसिक एयोटा इन एब्डोमिनल एयोटा नॉट इन सुप्रारेनल इट इज इन इंट्रारेनल गिव मी अ थम्स अप सो मोस्ट कॉमन साइट इज इंट्रारेनल पोर्शन ऑफ द एब्डोमिनल एयोटा टू बी वेरी वेरी स्पेसिफिक एंड इट्स शेप इज फ्यूजिफॉर्म इट इज एवरीवेयर सरकमफेरेंशियली दैट्स व्हाई नोन एज फ्यूजिफॉर्म सो इन दिस डायग्राम कैन यू सी द एयोटा can you see abdominal aorta this one is abdominal aorta can you see these are the renal arteries so just below the renal arteries intrarenal portion is dilated and then it is dividing into two iliac the common iliac right and left common iliac you know that so this portion is atherosclerotic aneurysm and it is intrarenal in location give me a thumbs up kishore you got it you got it so this is the aorta which i have drawn you i have shown you the various parts and this is the location this is renal arteries just below the renal arteries that is intrarenal in location is the atherosclerotic aneurysm yes so the pathogenesis you already know atherosclerosis is causing thinning and destruction of the wall causing weakness of the wall that's why aneurysm is there atherosclerotic aneurysm yes or no yes or no coming on the second aneurysm the second aneurysm is the syphilis syphilis aneurysm also known as leutic iska dusra naam yaad rakhna leutic ke naam se question aata and you you people forget that leutic aneurysm is the syphilitic one only it is lifid the syphilitic one only syphilitic or leutic aneurysm is caused by a bacteria the name of the bacteria is trypanoma pallidum trypanoma pallidum is a bacteria that cause vasculitis in the wall of the blood vessel the bacteria cause infection of the wall of the blood vessel that's why the focally the wall of the blood vessel become weak and producing an aneurysm there that is known as syphilitic aneurysm right in syphilis there are three stages primary secondary tertiary aneurysm is formed in tertiary stage usually in males after 50 years of age right what is the site as i have told you the site here is the ascending aorta near arch of aorta so i would like to draw can you see here where is where is the aneurysm here i can notice this is the aneurysm so this is the aneurysm it is in ascending aorta so one more diagram i would like to show you here again one thing i want to tell you that's why i am drawing it again so this is right side of the heart this is left side of the heart in the left side of the heart from where aorta is arising from here aorta is arising so just suppose this is the aorta it is arising from the left ventricle like this we know that right so here is the wall the name of the wall is aortic wall right and where is the aneurysm i am saying where what is the location of uh, syphilitic aneurysm syphilitic aneurysm is in ascending aorta so this is the location of syphilitic aneurysm it is just near aortic wall now you can imagine this aortic wall is a semilunar wall having two cusps so normally the wall closes the wall opens so whenever the left ventricle is contracting 
so the valve opens and blood is ejected here and whenever the left ventricle relaxes the valve closes yes or no but due to aneurysm here in the ascending aorta near the aortic wall the two cusps will, will get separated and the person can have aortic regurgitation so aortic, aortic regurgitation will be a complication of this um, uh, this thing uh, this heart you got my point so here the problem will be with the aortic wall and because of which uh, the blood will remain here only the blood will remain here only a uh, more blood will be there due to the regurgitation so it will it will cause the increased size of the heart the heart size will increase you got my point so all this thing is written here it can lead to aortic incompetency aortic incompetency means aortic regurgitation that can lead to left ventricular hypertrophy you got my point so you can see here the left ventricle is enlarged in size this is the reason because of the regurgitation so this is the same thing written here in syphilis what is happening inflammation in the arteries that are happening that is causing ischemia in the media that is causing destruction of the wall weakness of the wall producing aneurysm right one more thing important in leukemic or syphilitic aneurysm see this is the aneurysm and you see from inside how does it look it look the pre bath and you see this appearance this is the inside you can see the syphilitic aneurysm it is looking the bark of a tree i noticed a tree i forgot to put the diagram this is a tree so is it looking the bark of a tree yes it is looking the bark of a tree you can imagine so this is known as tree bark appearance due to the wrinkling due to the wrinkling of the aorta can you see this portion is wrinkled the wrinkling the wrinkling is producing uh this the wrinkling is producing and that is known as uh tree bark appearance so that is about aneurysm the last portion what is the treatment what is the treatment of aneurysm is it necessary to treat aneurysm just suppose there is a patient and i am doing some investigation i am doing the scan and accidentally i have found the aneurysm in the aorta if the the aneurysm is in, in the aorta and it is not producing any symptom in the patient it was a accidental detec detection coincidental detection so what is the treatment number one and does this patient require treatment symptoms are not there symptoms are not there so what is the criteria what is the criteria if the aneurysm is less than 4 cm the diameter of the aneurysm you have to see the diameter the diameter of the aneurysm i am talking about this diameter so you have to see the diameter of the aneurysm if the diameter of aneurysm is less than 4 cm uh, the risk of rupture is nil so don't uh, take operate the patient and don't give the treatment right but if the diameter is more than 4 to 5 the risk of rupture is 1% every year 5 to 6 the risk of uh, rupture is 11% every year and if the aneurysm is more than 6 cm the risk of rupture is 25% you got the meaning of the risk of rupture if big aneurysm is there there is a possibility that it will rupture the day it will rupture we don't know when it will rupture but the day it will rupture it is an emergency and it is not sure whether you will be able to save the patient here or not so you have to do prophylactic surgery i agree that it is not producing any symptoms right now so you have to consult the patient patient ka counseling is very difficult you have to consult the patient that it is not producing any symptom in you we know that it is a incidental finding incidental detection you should go for the surgery in the surgery what we will do what we will do in the surgery in the surgery we will put a stent here stent we will put a open stent here so all the blood will go in this stent only and this portion will be empty and it will with time it will shrink automatically so there is no chances of rupture if you put the stent so that is a surgery the treatment is a surgery the stent surgery you got my point it is a vascular surgery so you have to consult the patient if the size of this aneurysm is more than 5 cm chances of rupture are very high and you should get operated prophylactically before rupture you got my point so uh, otherwise once it will get ruptured now we are not sure that whether we will be able to treat you save you yes or no we don't know when the point at will rupture where you are you are at which portion of the world right whether hospital nearby available or not available whether someone you, you will be in emergency you cannot walk and come to the hospital because you have ruptured some you will have severe internal bleeding at that time someone will shift you to the hospital at that time ot is available not available doctor is available not available surgeon available not available we are not sure and death is you know 50% of the patient dies in emergency without surgery so after rupture we are not sure but before rupture you should go for a prophylactic surgery that you have to consult the patient give me a thumbs up if you got it so all aneurysm the criteria is that all the aortic aneurysm which are 5 cm or larger they should be managed aggressively and a surgery the, the surgical bypass prosthetic graft or stent should be the stent graft should be uh, should be uh, you know uh, put inside the aorta and timely surgery is the critical right timely surgery is the critical so if someone is getting operated prophylactically without rupture 
the risk of mortality is only 5% during surgery. But if someone got rupture, the risk of mortality is 50%. So you can see the difference, right? So you have to counsel the patient like this. And this is the surgery you can see. In the surgery, you are putting a stent here. And after putting in inside the stent, you are opening the stent. Now the stent is open. So all the blood, all the blood will go inside the stent. It will not go here. You got my point? That is a surgery. That is a surgery. So I guess we are done with this topic also. We are done with the uh, atherosclerosis, right? Give me a minute. We are done with the atherosclerosis, right? Now the next topic, the last topic, next five minutes. The last topic here is aortic dissection. The last topic to be taught is the aortic dissection. Now what is aortic dissection? I would like to draw a diagram here. Let me draw the intima. Okay, this is the intima. Okay, let me draw the media. Let me draw a media. I want to draw only intima and media. Okay, external, I'm not interested. There is external, there is no problem. Okay, draw it if you wish, you can draw it. So this is the external. Okay, there is no problem in the external. You can see the color coding. Now, where is the blood present? Where is the blood? Of course, the blood is present in the lumen, right? Now, imagine if there is a gap here. If in the intima, there is an injury and there is a gap. What will happen? The blood will leak. The, the gap is not throughout. The gap is only in intima. From this gap, from this injury, the blood will leak into the media and form, it will dissect the layers of the media. You know, media is the thickest layer. Media is the thickest layer. What is the thickness of the media? You can appreciate media is the thickest layer. It is made up of layers. The layers of the smooth muscle cells, right? The media have layers. So whenever there is an injury in the intima, blood leaks out in the media and blood, in media mein ki kahan jayega blood? The blood will go down to the gravity and it will dissect, you know, the word dissection dissect the layers of the media. The layers of the media will be cut into two portions and blood will flow in between. So you can see a parallel second blood, blood channel is formed. So actually two lumens will be there. This is a true, this is a true blood vessel and this is a pseudo, pseudo blood vessel. You got my point? And it is a severe painful condition. It's not painful that patient described the pain that someone is cutting my aorta with a knife. Someone is cutting my aorta with a knife. Someone is dissecting my aorta. It is such a painful condition. So actually it is a dissection, but not with the knife. The dissection is caused by the blood. So blood is coming and dissecting the aorta, the wall of the aorta, the media into two portions. That's why it is known as aortic dissection. The media of the aorta is dissected by the blood. Give me a thumbs up. Right? So you got my point, Kishore, Mariam, others. You got my point. So that is the aortic dissection. So what is aortic dissection? Here you can appreciate. Can you see here? I'm talking about this, this injury. So from intima, blood is coming and a second channel is formed parallel to the main blood vessel. So this is aortic dissection. You can appreciate the media is dissected into two portions. Yes or no? You got my point. So when the blood separates the planes of the media, the layers of the media, and a second blood filled channel is formed parallel to the main, main blood vessel, that is known as aortic dissection. Here also you can appreciate blood is going inside from here and a parallel blood channel is formed. Here also you can appreciate the same. This is the parallel channel to the main channel, right? Here also this is a cross-sectional diagram. The blood is going here. So this is the main lumen containing blood. And in the media, this is a pseudo channel. This is a pseudo channel containing blood is formed due to the aortic dissection. Give me a thumbs up, everyone. Here you can notice this is the injury. The blood is coming in the media and going in both ways, dissecting the planes of the media. So in all diagrams, only one thing is shown. That is blood filled channel is formed within the media. Blood filled channel is formed within the media and it is very painful condition. It is an emergency condition. Patient will rush to the hospital that I feel like someone is cutting my blood vessel, my chest with a knife. It is such a painful, sharp pain. The pain is described as sharp because it is like dissection, like dissection, right? And uh, that is the thing. Here, aorta is not dilated. Maybe, may not be. Like aneurysm, it is not dilated. Aneurysm is symptomless. Dissection is a painful condition, right? What is the pathogenesis? What is the pathogenesis? The pathogenesis is this injury. So why this injury is happening? If this injury is happening, then only blood is going inside and producing this dissecting channel, the second channel. Now, the cause of the injury is hypertension. In 90% of the cases, it is hypertension. So when blood is present here with high pressure, when blood is present here with high pressure, hypertension, so it will produce an injury and produce another channel. So in 90% of the cases, the cause is the hypertension. In 90% of the cases, it is hypertension. But in 10% of the cases, some non-hypertensive causes there. Usme most common is Marfan syndrome or cystic medial degeneration. Non-hypertensive causes me. Right? Morphological features to take care. You will, yeah. One more thing I would like to explain here is the term double barrel aorta. What do you mean by double barrel aorta? Ka matlab kya hota hai? Double barrel. Okay. Here is the first year. This is the first year. 
So the blood from the intima, you can see the blood is entering into the media, producing a channel, a parallel channel, which is the parallel to the main channel, dissecting the layers of the media into two portions. I can see the layers of the media get dissected into two portions and a parallel channel is formed. Now, after some time, after a certain distance, I mean, another tear is there. Another tear is there. So blood is going, forming a channel and coming back. So blood is going, forming a small length of channel and coming back here coming back here. So this is known as double barrel. This is known as double barrel. Double barrel means two tiers are there. First tier, second tier. Give me a thumbs up. So blood enters from the proximal tier into the media and comes out from the distal tier. There are two tiers, proximal, distal. You got my point. Jyoti, Shohib, you got my point. So this is double barrel aorta. The second channel which formed is false channel. It is false channel. After some time, endothelial cell also lie in this channel. Endothelialization takes place. Like the main channel is lined by endothelial lining, the false channel is also lined by endothelial lining later on. Endothelialization takes place later on in the false channel also. So two blood vessels in one. So can you see the cross section of this aorta? This is the true and this is the false. You cannot, after some time, you cannot differentiate which one is true, which one is false. You got my point. So this one is created due to the dissection between the planes of the media. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Have you got it? So this is aortic dissection. This is aortic dissection. Yes or no? Yes or no? So what is the histology? In the histology, if you take the section from here and make a slide, you will see this is the slide. In the slide, you will see in the media, multiple cystic media degeneration is there. Multiple cysts will be there. Cystic degeneration will be there. Right? Coming on the classification. The last thing, aortic dissection for classification, which is very important. Two different criteria, two different classifications are given in the book. It is very important not only in pathology, but in surgery subject also. This classification is very important. Two classifications are there, Stanford and DBK. I will teach you both. Let me, the both are shown in this diagram. So see, this is Stanford classification and this is DBK classification. First, let me teach you DBK. DBK, they go. Can you see the three aortas? Can you see the three portions of the aorta? Ascending, arch and descending. In all the three diagrams, this is ascending, this is arch, this is descending. This is ascending, this is arch, this is descending. Here also ascending, arch and descending. You can appreciate the three portions of the aorta. From the arch, you can appreciate the arteries. arteries. Now, see in the first diagram, DBK1. Uh, dissection is present throughout the aorta. In ascending also, in arch also, in descending also. So, it is DBK1. In DBK2, it is present only in ascending. Not arch, not descending. And in DBK3, it is present only in descending. So, if present only in ascending aorta, it is DBK2. If present only in descending aorta, it is DBK3. And it, if it is present throughout the aorta, it is DBK1. Give me a thumbs up. DBK1 is most severe. So DBK. What is DBK classification? You tell me DBK1, 2, 3. DBK1, it originates in the ascending aorta, propagates in the arch and beyond go in the distal aorta also. DBK2, it is confined to ascending aorta. DBK3, it confined in descending aorta. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So that is the DBK classification which is easier to understand. Yes or no? Coming on Stanford classification. See the second classification, Stanford. Stanford A, Stanford B. This is 1, 2, 3. Nahi hai. Stanford A is DBK 1 and 2 both. Easy to understand. And Stanford B is DBK 3. DBK 3 is actually Stanford B. You got my point. So if aortic dissection occurs only in distal, so by Stanford classification it is B and by DBK classification it is 3. But if uh, the aortic dissection occurring either in ascending or it is occurring throughout, it is DBK 1 and 2. Wahan pe to alag -alag Lekin Stanford is both of them is A. This is also A, this is also A. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So it is a little bit confusing, but not that much. You can understand by the diagram. So Stanford A and Stanford B. Stanford A starts from the ascending portion, with or without descending. Only ascending is also possible, that is DBK 2. And with or without descending, if it is there, so Stanford 3 uh, DBK 1 ho jayega. And it is B may only descending portion is there. Everyone give me a thumbs up. You got my point. So that is the classification. Clinical feature, as I told you, it is excruciating pain, knife cutting pain, excruciating pain, severe pain, sudden pain. Patient will cry with the pain. Patient feels that someone is cutting like a knife. That's why known as aortic dissection. The pain is sometimes confused with the myocardial infarction because both are chest pain. Right. So that is the aortic dissection. Right. Uh, I guess we are done. I guess we are done. Yes, I guess we have done. Right. So tell me the answer. In aortic dissection, blood enters in which layer? Does it enters in intima, media, adventitia, or any of the layer? In aortic dissection, in which layer? 
the dissection takes place. Aortic dissection में कौन सी layer पे dissection होता है? Can you tell me the answer? Shohib, Jyoti, Kishore, Maryam, others. Can anyone of you tell me the correct answer? Prabhakar, absolutely right, Prabhakar. So correct answer B. In the layers of the media, which is the thickest layer, so the layers of the media are separated into two parts by air, by the blood in between. So correct answer here is B. Can you tell me the answer, Prabhakar, others? What is the classification of aortic dissection depends on what? The class, I talked to you two classification, D, B, K, and Stanford. So both of them, depending on same same criteria, is it cause of dissection? Is it level of aorta dissection? Is it percentage of aorta involved or none of the above? So based on what I taught you the two classification right now, Stanford and DPK. So yes, Prabhagar, again you are right. It is the level of the aorta affected. So whether ascending aorta, arch of aorta, or descending aorta, which portion of the aorta is affected? Depending on that, there was three DPK. DPK 1, 2, 3 and there were two Stanford, Stanford A and B. You got the classification, Kishore? Absolutely right. So here also the correct answer here is B. Look at the next question. Most common cause of aortic dissection. In 90% of the cases, what is the cause? Most common cause. I taught you. What is causing the tear? The first tear, the proximal tear, from which blood is entering into the media and dissecting the media. Yes, yes. What is the correct answer? Who will tell me the yes, Kishore? Absolutely right. The correct answer is A, hypertension. So in 90% of the cases, the reason is hypertension. Right. In 10% of the cases, it is Marfan syndrome. In, the, in another 10. So correct answer here is A. Right. Cystic median necrosis, I have already taught you, it happens in Marfan syndrome. So I would like to stop now. So I have covered most of the diseases in blood vessel. Only one thing is remaining, vasculitis. All type of vasculitis. If you wish, I can arrange a separate lecture on vasculitis. I want to teach you many type of vasculitis. All large vessel vasculitis, all medium vessel vasculitis, all small vessel vasculitis, Anka positive, Anka negative. P Anka positive, P Anka, uh, P Anka positive. All time. In large vessel, it will be Takayasu and uh, you know temporal arthritis. In medium vessel, it is Pan and Kawasaki and Burger. And in small vessel, there are many. So I want to make a comparative table. I want to ask you to make a comparative table between all eight or nine type of vasculitis in a comparative manner. So that vasculitis becomes super easy for you and you can revise the entire vasculitis in just five or ten minutes before your exam. So I will arrange a separate lecture because time is limited now. I have to end the session. And really thank you for all of you for giving your precious time to me. In this, in this um, uh, session, we have covered hypertensive vasculopathy. We have covered atherosclerosis. We have covered aneurysm. We have covered aortic dissection. Four topics we have covered. The fifth one, vasculitis. I will arrange a separate lecture on that. Thank you very much for being with me. Bye-bye. Study hard. And there are a few announcements for you. Give me a minute to do the announcements. Just a second. Yeah, so here I am. Uh, so, an academy team have launched few new batches for the students. That is NEET PG 2023 preparation batch and repeaters batch. Once you take the subscription, you will be eligible for all these batches. Iconic prices are increasing soon. So, if you want to take the subscription, take it now. In the next few days, this price hike will be there. On an academy, we are available to five types of subscriptions. In plus subscription, you will get only an academy. In iconic, along with an academy, preparatory will also be available. In light subscription, you will get test series. In Prof 1, you will get anatomy, biochemistry, physiology only, nothing else. And in UPSC preparation, you will get UPSC batches. So whatever is your choice, need, requirement, wish, based on that, you can select your best plan. So various duration plans are available in each of them, in each of the subscription with various price. You can notice the price, longer the plan, cheaper it is. So whatever subscription is required by you, you can enroll for that, you can purchase that. If you apply my code before payment, you will get straight forward 10% discount. My code is Sachdev. My surname is Sachdev. Dr. Priyanka Sachdev. So it is S-A-C-H-D-E-V Sachdev without space 10. If you apply this code before payment on any of the subscription of an academy, you will get straight forward 10% discount. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.